Welcome back to Eat Sleep Boxing Repeats YouTube channel. I'm delighted to be joined by Paul and Elliot. This is a different sort of video we've done. We might not be doing it again. Before we go into that, just want to talk about the fight. I just want to talk about the fight itself. As everyone knows, Alexander Usyk versus Anthony Joshua 2 is on pay-per-view. There is a link in the description of this video as part of our YouTube channel. If you are interested in purchasing the pay-per-view and watching it live on August the 20th, please click the link and um, purchase the pay-per-view via us. It will do us a lot of help. So thank you very much. Um, this is a video. It is Team... Usyk versus Team AJ. Don't think we need to guess who Team AJ is. <laughs> it's um the man, the man with a hat. Um, both of these guys. One of these guys thinks Joshua is going to win. One of these guys thinks Usyk's going to win. And we are going to. They are going to debate as to why they believe their man's going to win. That's what the video is. <clears throat> team Usyk versus Team AJ. Gents, thanks for joining us on this lovely, lovely afternoon. Um, yeah hope there's no hope that hope this video doesn't doesn't destroy the relationship that you two have but um yeah looking forward to really getting into it yeah i can't wait go away i don't, I don't want to give away any clues as to who's arguing what but i'll just start by saying slava ukraini <laughs> okay, fine, look. and with that we'll go back to paul um paul you think anti joshua is going to win the rematch what is your we're going to do three reasons as to why that's going to why that's going to happen what's your first reason as to why joshua is going to win well, first and foremost, um, I don't think you could have got um, two more contrasting opinions here on the call. I think Elliot and I always seem to disagree on <laughs> every. Even, for example, there on, on, on Saturday night, the Chamberlain Bill and Smith fight. It was like, oh, that was a clear Bill and Smith round. And I was like, no, 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 it was a Chamberlain round. Um, we literally disagree <laughs> on everything. So I think it's quite fitting that we do this video. So, yeah, um, three ways or three reasons why I think Anthony Joshua will win. Uh, in no particular order the first one I know we're going to come on to it more um, later in the video but I think that the change of trainer for Joshua um, will have massively helped to be quite honest um, I think he needed to freshen things up I think that his relationship with Robert McCracken was getting a bit stale um, a lot of people had said that the even in you know even in the fights Joshua had won um, prior to the Usyk loss you know even the Pulev like the tactics and the advice from the corner um, weren't really accurate as to how Joshua really should have been fighting. In hindsight, you look at that Pula fight now and you think that Joshua, the Joshua that we've seen on numerous occasions, could have could have blasted Pula out of there a little bit quicker. But he took a more defensive and it's almost like this thing when Joshua said himself, oh, I don't have a game plan. I'm just going to try and you know go in there and see what I can do. But he has definitely been trying to box more. And I don't think that's helped him whatsoever. So I don't know. You know, I could be wrong. It might not have been Robert McCracken's idea, but I assume it is because he's his coach. So I think that going to someone like Robert Garcia will definitely help in the sense that it'll bring out um, Joshua's best assets. Um, don't get me wrong. I don't think. I think if he goes to the all guns blazing, old AJ style, you know, like the the, the Charles Martin, the pre, the Bill and White, all the the Klitschko fight, I don't. I think he will get stopped if he's just really gung ho. But I think with a trainer like Robert Garcia, um, I'll I'll come I'll go in more depth to, into it later. But I think with a more measured, aggressive approach, I think that's one of the reasons why um, he could bamboozle Usyk, which not very many people have done before. But I, I think he's definitely um, capable of doing it. Second of all, and it may seem like an obvious point, and some people might say that this isn't isn't a good enough reason at all. But I think that just the sheer, you know, it's. I don't know whether Joshua will be thinking, this is kind of make or break for me. Um, don't get me wrong, if he does lose, I could still see a way back for him, but it would be very, very, very difficult um, coming off back-to-back -back losses to Usyk, who everyone was saying is just a blown-up, you know, he's a, as, as to use Tyson Fury, he's a blown-up middleweight. Mm -hmm. um, I think that if Joshua does lose, it's difficult to see where he goes in the immediate future, and you probably still have to put him behind, even the likes of Wilder if he was to lose. But if he were to win and become a three-time heavyweight champion, you know, not very many people in history can say they've been a three-time heavyweight champion. So I think that, you know, we've seen, I know Joshua's um, already out in, in, in Jeddah and stuff, um, and he has been about a month prior to the fight. But I think this whole, you know, the, the few clips and interview clips and quotes we've seen from him, it's just like, you know, almost like, I don't get enough respect. Um, watch, wait and see on August 20th. Um, and then everyone will respect me, blah, blah, blah. Um, I, I just think, I think he's got the eye of the tiger back. 
you know, I do, I do. I'm, I'm ready to. I think that he was too cautious against Usyk. Even the ring walk, for example, the ring walk kind of pissed me off the first time against Usyk because you thought he'd already won. Um, I don't, I don't understand that. I don't think. I think in Jetta, I'm not saying do the Mike Tyson hood up straight into the ring, mm. but you know, make sure you're in. He's make sure he's in the zone. I kind of gone off on a bit of a tangent there, but I just think there's too much to lose for Joshua, which I think will really motivate him to. Um, you know, put in a career best performance, touch wood, and and get the W. Yeah, and, and you're and you're sorry, sorry to interrupt you on that one, Paul. So you're you, with your second point. Your second point relates to him just being extremely motivated and being less cautious as he was in the first fight. Yeah, less cautious, uh, and just the fact there's probably too much <laughs> to lose. And does it is it a concern to you at all that he? Might go in that might go in there a bit too gung ho and get caught. Is that a concern to you? Being like thinking, I've absolutely got to win this fight. I can't lose it. Does that concern you at all? Uh, yeah, I think I'd, I think I'd be naive to say that it doesn't concern me a little bit. Um, if I'm going to be honest, but I think with a coach like Robert Garcia, I think that he just has to listen to him really because Robert Garcia is not stupid. He's not gonna. He's not gonna say to AJ, "Yeah, we've got five rounds. Just go in there, give it all you got, try and stop him." I think if that is the approach, well, that's just daft. Um, I think that he does need to take a more measured, aggressive approach. As we we talked about this on the, the big breakdown we did um, a few weeks ago, and my third and final point. Um, again, I, I can already I can already see Elliot's counter argument here, but I'm just gonna say it anyway. I just think that yes, Usyk won last time. Um, with relative ease, I do understand that, and I can see why people think that Usyk will get the stoppage this time. But just see for me, if Joshua uses his weight, height, just general size advantage, I don't think like, he needs to know how to use it. I just think the bigger a good big man always beats a good a good a good wee man, doesn't he? Um, and I'm not saying Usyk's small or or whatever. But in the sense that, you know, when you put them side by side, Joshua's a man mountain still compared to Usyk. And I just think that, let's be honest, Usyk probably does have, you know, Usyk does have a good chin. We've seen him hit at Stephen Cruz. We haven't seen him hit that much. You know, Joshua isn't as a one-punch or concussive knockout artist as the likes of, you know, Deontay Wilder or whatever. Um, but, you know, he's still notched up the majority of his fights by, by KO. So he's clearly one of the most powerful that we've seen in the um, in this modern era in this past decade or so. Anyway, um, so I just think he needs to use it. Yes, the question marks are how can he land those big shots? Um, how can he use his size and not get caught against someone who's more fleet-footed than him, um, who's quicker than him, and who's just got a general better boxing IQ than him? I do understand that, but I just think that you know you kind of got it. You kind of got to break him down. AJ himself, everyone's like, oh, he gets wobbled or whatever, but I don't think AJ has that bad of a chin. I, I think he can afford to take a couple of shots from Music, and um, if that means that he's able to get within range, you know, put his size on, put his size on um, Usyk and just use it to his advantage. And I'm not for any second saying his tactics should be like the Chisora tactics because, yeah, Chisora might have won one or two rounds at the start of the fight, but he probably lost the whole last part of it by doing that. So I don't think, like, and let's be honest, Joshua and, and Chisora are completely different fighters. But I think if he does, kind of put himself first couple of rounds, see what, see what, see what's going on. Um, I don't mind if he loses the first few, and the mid rounds, you know, early to mid rounds, start putting it a little bit more on us. Like throw a few more combinations, put a hook on the end, your one twos, throw shots that perhaps Usyk might not even be expecting. Um, and I just think that if Joshua does use his size. Like he should, because you know what I mean. He's six foot six. He's an absolute man mountain of a man. Like I, I just think fighting someone that's six foot six and built like a brick shit house. Um, you know, I think he, I think he's just got to use that to his advantage more this time. Yeah. Well. Uh, yeah. No. Good. Good. Final point, mate. Um, want to ask about weight as well. We're going to get onto that in a little bit. Um, but um, but yeah, I think. Yeah, interest to see what, what we discussed in another video of interest to see what weight you think Joshua needs to come in at in order to maintain that size and come across as a real force in the second fight against against Usyk. Okay, we'll move to Elliot now. Um, what are your let, talk us through your three points, Elliot, and then afterwards you can have any questions for Paul and vice versa as well. 
Um, no, thank you, thank you. So yeah, as Paul said, you know, we do tend to tend to disagree, but we're actually both coming into this on reasonable form, actually. Like Paul was saying, I, I managed to prevail in the uh, Billum Smith prediction, but he uh, prevailed in the Josh Kelly one on Saturday. I had Kelly losing that, so we're actually coming into this tied one all. Um, so I'll start off by saying, okay, three points. So <clears throat> the first one I'll, I'll say is that we've seen obviously the first fight. We've seen this fight before, um, and it's the sense of for me the golf in. And taking apart, you know, taking apart, I suppose, tactics and all these different things, the gulf in class for me between the two fighters in the first fight is simply unbridgeable in the time that's been taken between then and now. I almost feel like if it was a close fight, you go, OK, there's certain sort of adjustments that can be made. But I'm not sure. I mean, AJ's, what, 32 now. I'm not sure, even with a new trainer, the adjustments that he can make will suffice the gulf in, in, in class that we saw in the first fight. And I think not only that, you're looking at it going... Considering the loss that he took, I know he's given it shades of shades of Cash Alley or Tatiana Alley, whoever Alley he was talking about in the first fight. But we're sitting there going, he knows, he also, he now knows, obviously, that he can be beaten. And it's that sense as well of, you've shared the ring with someone, you've been out box that comprehensively. I just think, sitting there thinking, really, I just don't see that bridge being, 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 yeah, for that, that golfing class being bridged, frankly. Um, so that's my first point, which in turn will segue into my second point, which Paul did touch on. Um, but I suppose we're coming at it from from slightly different perspectives as well. And that's that I feel there's also a, a sense of panic around AJ now. Like all that stuff that he was saying around, you know, I don't get the respect that I've deserved, et cetera, et cetera. The sense that the, the zone deal, all these other things that just seem to be sort of coming around. The new trainer again is for me like one of those sort of canary on the minds where you think, okay, like that seems like, you know, it always seems like you switch fighters, switch trainers when, when things go wrong, which they obviously did go wrong in the first fight, but also that sense of you looking at it going, well, I mean, Robin McCracken is a renowned trait. And I also said, I can kind of agree with what, I agree with what Paul says about the Pula fight, though. I think AJ fought kind of off the back of the Ruiz kind of nerves that he had going into that, the side of that event and kind of kept that same sort of cautious style when he should have just been running through him, frankly. Um, but how much does that down to McCracken? I'm not entirely sure either. I think there's also that sense of he knows AJ. And you're sitting there going, okay, there comes a point where you're obviously a very muscly man who, who who can obviously punch quite hard. But equally, there comes a point in, you know, in boxing where you have to be a bit more than that. And in a way, I kind of think, okay, maybe they went a bit too far in the kind of let's mould him into this kind of like, you know, into this slick box, as it were. But I also think there's a sense of if you want to beat the guys that are at this sort of elite top end of that division, you need to you need to have that. And I think that's still where AJ will come on stuff against against the likes of music and against the likes of Fury and possibly I'm not saying that Wild is a slick boxer, but I think AJ does get hit, does get caught, and I think if Wilder catches him, he's going to sleep. So that's for me is where is where he'll probably lose that fight, even though I think he's a better boxer than, than Wilder. Um and the third fight, the third third, third third fight. The third point is kind of an all encompassing point, which is this kind of sense it's this kind of I suppose leading on from the trainer, but it's a sense of like the tactics and the fact that people are just kind of assuming now that AJ just going to sort of go in there and if he just sort of like throws a bit more and, you know, just kind of uses, as we're saying, the size a bit more, that essentially it's going to be, it's going to be too much for Usyk. I think that like, again, you're not going to necessarily learn new things, but also this is going to be a contentious point and I'm going to throw it out there anyway. But I also think that AJ, well, he's got 22 <laughs> knockouts in 24 fights. So it's going to seem a bit of a ridiculous point, but I also think the sense of his power is actually a bit overrated. Then the sense of like you're sitting there going like, right, Wilder's got the one punch KO. If he had that, I don't think I don't think Joshua's got that. Quite frankly, I don't think he's got the one punch KO. I'm looking like through his KOs list, and I'm saying, Dillian White KO is is a legitimate fight, British title fight they had there. That was a good victory. Then I'm looking through, and you've got the likes of you know Charles Martin, Brazil, Molina, those guys. I'd expect a heavyweight of, of AJ stature to be to be knocking out. Klitschko, you're looking at that one going, right, good good performance, but Klitschko was 42, and he almost went life and death in, in that fight as well. And it, I'm also looking at going, Klitschko had him down. If Klitschko had stepped him a bit more, could easily have been a very different decision. So that fight for me, even though it deserves respect for the size of the event, it wasn't it wasn't as convincing, I think, as a lot of people like to like to say it was. Then you've got Takam, fair enough. like Not, a, not an elite level fighter, but fringe sort of like, I was going to say world level, probably like bottom end of the sort of, you know, sort of top 15 at that time sort of fighters, I'd say. So fair enough. Parker, UD, fine. But then I don't think Parker equally 
is that good. Like, I'm not saying, like, you're looking at it going, this is when AJ almost, for me, tried to, you know, become a bit of a boxer. You see, like, the park at the floor against Trezora. I don't know. I'm just, again, it's like, should really be blasting that Parker out there, I think. And then Povetkin, okay, fine. That was a good win. I'll give that KO as a good victory, just because obviously from Povetkin's ability. But again, you're looking at it going, Povetkin was, what, late 30s at that point. Pulev, late 30s at that point. That victory there is blasting him out. So he's basically shown an aptitude for knocking out guys that are quite old um, and all the guys that so the, the legit KOs I'm giving really I suppose are white even though I don't necessarily rate Daniel White that was a legit victory because obviously he was you know uh, age and, and stage of career and possibly Klitschko for the size of the event but I think when you get to big fights like this like we saw Ruiz when he boxed I think we the Ruiz tactics in that fight were fine obviously you just want to get through that and win but I think you're fighting against him you're fighting against guys like Usyk the Parker fight, you're looking at those sort of the styles that he's fighting against those sort of guys. I just don't think he's going to walk in there and blast him. And the fact that you're, the people are sitting there going, yeah, if he just, you know, hits a bit harder and tries a bit harder, throws a bit more, he's going to he's gonna just knock him out. Shows a bit of disrespect for Usyk, in my opinion, who has obviously also fought bigger opponents before, dealt with that. But the myth that Chisora, like had him in trouble, again, not buying anything to that, that was a convincing victory for, for Usyk. So I almost feel like it's different to the Ruiz fight, this one. Um, like you, right, Ruiz, you look at it and go, he could have, like an opponent size difference-wise, could have been overwhelmed. You could have just stepped on him maybe a bit. Obviously, take the fast hands into the equation. But, I mean, like what Paul was saying, 6'6 six, six versus 6'3, six, reach of 82 versus 78. For me, the size factor isn't so significant that it's going to be, it's going to bridge that that gap in that gap in, in class from the first fight. So, to summarise, those are my points. We've seen the fight before. There's a sense of panic, I think, in the AJ camp. And it's just the sense, stylistically, that you can't do enough size-wise with the, the power differential. I just don't think it'll be enough to bridge it. So those are my three. And uh, passing back over to our moderator, uh, Elliot Stock. Thanks, mate. Appreciate that. No, really interesting points, guys. Like We're not going to kind of go on for the next three hours, but I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure we could do. Um, Paul... Yeah, I think both good points by both of you. I think you both, when Paul was talking, I was thinking, oh, shit, Joshua could win this fight. And when Elliot was talking, I was thinking, oh, no, actually, I think Uzik's going to win this fight. So both compelling points. But, Paul, I'm going to open the floor back to you. Kind of any reaction or questions or bitterness towards Elliot when, during, during those <laughs> points you want to say to him? No, no, no. Obviously... Um, I completely see where he's coming from, and I know I'm in the min- the minority now. Uh, I think Joshua was going to win, and uh, the points he the points he made, you know what? Again, we have seen it before. You know, there's no reason that the exact same thing couldn't happen again. I get that. Um, one of the things, however, I did um slightly disagree with was when Elliot said about you know what AJ's 31. You can't just you can't just almost have a completely different style. Um, and two points to this. I don't think that, A, he necessarily needs a massively different style than what he had before. It's not like, you know, it's not like he was just a, he's not like he was just a brawler, for example, and then he was fighting someone and needed to learn how to box. Um, it's not like that. I think that a mixture of the, the back foot boxing AJ and the, and the come forward, you know, pre Ruiz first fight AJ. Is so it's just kind of getting that balance, I believe, in between that. Obviously, because Usyk's a better boxer um, than than Joshua is, but I think that if Joshua does use his assets to his advantage um, and his calculated calculated risks and attacks, um, like but like he did before, but just maybe not as gung ho, I think that he's able to do that. So it's not like he's doing something completely different. It's just kind of getting that happy medium between the two. Um, and then the other thing I'd say as well is on that point is like who's to say that Joshua doesn't come out with a completely different style that we've never seen before. You know, you look at Tyson Fury and everyone knew his, him as the back foot boxer, the, the points heavyweight. And then now I look at him with the Sugar Hill Stewart and he's this knockout artist coming forward, takes shots, throw heavy leather. So he's just kind of completely adopted style. And I can under, I understand people might think that he's naturally better, um, you know, a better boxer than um, Joshua does. But even like the, the physique of Joshua and just the and stuff. I just think he's. I think he's. He would find it easier to adopt a different style, um, than than potentially people think and give him credit for. So I, I, yeah, they're the only two things I would really say. That, yeah, I don't think that 
he needs to completely adopt a completely different style here um, in order to win. I think he's got the fundamentals that he can do. It's just a matter of putting it together. How he does that, I'm not so sure, but I'm sure him and his coach will have sorted that out. And yeah, no, no good, it, it, inter- interesting stuff, mate. I think, um, yeah, Elliot going to give you the chance to like res- 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 respond, respond to that as well. Um, yeah, actually, you know what, Elliot? What have you? What, what you might? I'm sure you've got a list of things you want to say now. I'll, I'll, I'll let you crack on. <laughs> I have a list of things actually. I'm just uh, in this headline things that Paul has got wrong. So I'm going to go through uh, each of these individually. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. I'm joking, Paul. Um, no, what I was going to say to Paul actually on his point, actually, I do accept what you're saying actually about Tyson Fury. The sense of um, you know, like almost boxing within himself and like doing that sort of hit and don't get hit, and then almost taking more risks at this stage of his career, which is actually quite interesting. Um, I'm just the thing for me, I suppose. Whilst I can accept that, is I just I'm not sure the changes that that AJ would be able to make would be as effective in the sense that I just don't think like it's almost like you were saying. Again, this is not a point. Actually, it's just me sort of responding to it. But that the sense of like he's got to be a bit more cautious, but then equally come on a bit at the same time. And I just kind of feel like I just don't think I'm not sure that AJ's going to be able to be as, as sort of considered. Or in the fight to be able to balance it over twelve rounds like that, it's almost like the sense of it might make sense to do that. But I just think Usyk will be constantly, he'll constantly have him reacting. He'll constantly be sort of, you know, that the movement that he has, making him move, making him work. And I just think with the engine that AJ's got as well, I'm not entirely sure that over twelve rounds he's going to be able to sort of come on as as you think he'll be able to come on. But actually, on that point, what I'm going to say is, so if you're saying because you were saying obviously about giving away the first few rounds, you don't mind that necessarily, and then sort of coming on maybe in the middle rounds. Are you essentially saying then that it's all on the knockout for AJ? Because if you give us away the first few rounds, essentially you're going, say you give us away the first three, okay, you could get a matchroom decision. There's, there's that. Let's take that off the table, though. And just say, like, say he gives away the first three, you're going, well, he's going to have to win, you know, seven of the next sort of nine. Do you, it seems unlikely that would happen. So are you literally sticking everything on? the AJ late stoppage or is there any any possible way that you could foresee that he might win on points or is it literally stoppage for you or nothing yeah so again points to two responses to your question now essentially yeah I mean I've said that before in in our preview and stuff I think that if Joshua is the win the likelihood is for it to be a knockout just because you look at Usyk and you think is there anyone that can really outbox him Um, so I don't think Joshua can outbox him no chance however I would also, the caveat to that is I would also say that I could see him win on points if perhaps, just for argument's sake, Joshua, you know, he did, yeah, let's say give the first three rounds away. It got to the middle rounds. He was coming into more. He was he was taking a few more risks. Say he perhaps, you know, got a knockdown in the eighth round or the ninth, and then maybe one in the ninth or whatever, and I got a knockdown or two. And then, but Usyk was still there, but he was still hurt. Yeah, I could see, you know, I could see, Joshua getting the points victory maybe just purely on the knockdowns. Um, but no, in, in terms of, you know, forget knockdowns, in terms of 12 rounds of boxing, do I think Anthony Joshua could win seven of them at least to beat Usyk on points? Forgetting about knockouts? No, I don't think so. I just don't think anyone could really do that to Usyk, to be honest, no matter what size they are. I think that he needs to, he needs to stop him, and I think he, he'll know that as well. And there's a couple of things actually. It was just, um, I was just going to talk to you actually about the. Um, obviously, I think we're looking at possibly it slightly differently with regards to um, the training, the change. Obviously, you're saying you know, obviously, like you think um, the the eye of the tiger is back essentially for AJ, and that that essentially he's found that motivation. Um, do you think? I mean, obviously we've seen him in pressure situations before. I'm thinking Klitschko. I'm thinking Ruiz too. Do you think though, with the size of this event, firstly that the occasion will actually be too much like the zone pressure outside of it the fact that he essentially could be looking at the world title wilderness after this if it doesn't if it doesn't obviously go his way uh, that's the first question the second question is if he does win do you think we'll see a third fight and my last question to you is more of a point more slash a question do you think obviously i remember i mean my, my memories of garcia mostly are when he was training my diana for floyd um do you think in a way if AJ went in and sort of had that similar sort of style where he just fucking throws the kitchen sink at him, basically tries to bite him or whatever, or just tries to show a bit of, you know, a bit of, tries to ruffle him up a bit. Do you reckon that's something that Garcia will bring to him? Can you see that kind of pattern unfolding here? Um, 
Thanks for all your vast amount of questions. I feel like I'm being quizzed here, but yes, no, the first, to answer your first one, the size of the event and the magnitude of it, I don't think really, that, to be honest, I don't see it as much of a problem for either of them. they both, like the last fight, what was Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, they, they fought there loads of times, and it was on the He's fought. Was the final of that in Jeddah? Is that right? Or was that the was that the Callum Smith super middleweight one? I'm not 100 percent sure. I know one of them was, um, but you know I don't really read much into the size of the event, kind of, and the pressure on AJ. You know, he's there's been pressure on AJ since he turned pro. Really, let's be honest, an expectation. You know, he won a gold medal in in his home. You know, when in the in a home Olympics, and um, there's pressure in itself before he was even a professional. The pressure again, the Klitschko fight. The, the, the fights he's had at the Principality. I think, he's, you know, the big crowds has always been pressure and he has shown that he can handle it. Um, yeah, I know he's I know he got beat twice off Ruiz and Usyk respectively, but I, I think that the size of the event, I don't really think the pressure will get to either man, so I don't really see it as a point either way, to be honest. Um, your second question was... What was your second question? Oh, will there be a third about, fight? Um, there was a point about whether... Um, well, there's a point obviously about Garcia, but also the point, yeah, about sort of styles. We'll go there first. Actually. Whether we'll see a third fight was my actual second one if he wins. But there, then the point about Garcia and, and the style against uh, Floyd against Maidana. Well, the, the, will there be a third fight if AJ wins first? Um, it all depends on the undisputed fight, really, doesn't it? Um, I obviously we don't know the ins and outs of contract negotiations. Obviously, the first fight was signed, where if Joshua did lose. There'll be a rematch. I don't know if they can, th you know, Team Usa can throw a clause in and being like, well, we're, we hold the, the cards now. If we lose this, we want to have a rematch and we'll have a, you know, it's one, one apiece. Let's see who can win it for once and once and for all. I'm not 100% sure. I think, though, if Joshua wins, I think you just got to, you got to, you got to cry out for the undisputed fight with Fury, to be honest. Um, so I hear, but then again, I hear Eddie Hearn saying, oh, yeah. Joshua, regardless, will fight again before the, end of the year. He's not going to fight Fury before the end of the year, whether he if he if he wins the belts. So would it be someone like would it be a Usyk third fight? Would that be an option they'd exploit? Possibly. Would it be someone like Joe Joyce, a Dylan White trilogy? I don't know. I really don't know. Um, I don't know if I'd want the third fight. Um, even if Joshua wins, depends on the manner of victory or or what. Um, and then to answer your final point about. Robert Garcia, I'm actually going to go into this a good bit when we talk about the new training situation, but no, I don't think, I think if he uses that Maidana approach, he will get, he'll gas out and get stopped in the mid-rounds, to be honest. Um, he's too smart for that. You can't, you, you can't just basically forget about, oh, let's forget about all my fundamental boxing skills and just throw the kitchen sink. I don't think he can do that. Um, but Robert Garcia, um, I don't want to go into it too much now because I've got a few points to mention, talk about when we're going we're talking about um, the new training situation, but I just think that the fighters that he's trained recently, um, I, I look at them and look at their styles and look at their records and think that it suits Joshua. Nice one, guys. All right, we are running out of time. Not got too much time left. Paul, I'm going to ask you quickly why why Robert Garcia, what like if you can add on to what you've already said in terms of why Robert Garcia is the perfect trainer for Joshua, what's he going to tell him to do that McCracken couldn't tell him to do in the first fight? Okay, so you look at Robert Garcia, and obviously he's a previous Ring Magazine trainer of the year, so he's he, everyone knows um, his attributes. He, he is a, he's a really good coach. He currently trains, you know, off the top of my head, the likes of uh, uh, Jose Ramirez, Jesse Bam Rodriguez. Um, I think he still trains Joshua Franco as well. You know. We all know Bam Rodriguez now, who's the kind of come from nowhere and he's this absolute animal at down at Superfly. And we've got Josh Franco who's down there as well. Obviously, he, uh, Garcia formerly trained Mikey Garcia for a while. He formerly trained Donaire, and up until earlier this year, he for he, he was training Virgil Ortiz as well. Um, so I'm, if I look at those fights, I'll use the likes of let let me use Jesse Rodriguez and Virgil Ortiz as an example, right? You look at both of them, and both of them have essentially nearly knocked out every opponent they've put in front of them. Uh, Ortiz is 18 or no, 18 KOs. I don't know Rodriguez's record off the top of my head, but I know it's a really, really high KO ratio as well. Um, so I think that 
But if you look at them, they're not just knockout artists. They're not just punters. They can box a bit as well, which I think is important for AJ because, you know, he won an Olympic gold medal. Okay, it was a decade, decade ago. Yes, he got outboxed by Usyk, but he can still box a little bit. You know, he's got a he's got a good job. He does have a good job. He can use his one two as well. He can box at range, not to the level of Usyk, but he still can't fundamentally box. So I think the mix, the Robert Garcia, you know, just off the names he's trained in the last five or so years, I think that you know he's almost a perfect fit because he's someone that can box if he does need to, but also he's got qu- quite a lot of um, quite a lot of knockouts himself. Joshua um, clearly has that power, so I do think that. I do think that Robert Garcia, out of everyone, is probably the best fit um, that I can see for Joshua. And I like the fact that he's gone out to Jeddah a month early, get in the zone. Um, I know it's not a big time difference or anything, but like you know the 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 climate change and all of that. I just like I, I don't know whether that was Robert Garcia's idea. If it was, good shot. I, I like that. Um, so yeah, I just think that if AJ, you know AJ can you can use his boxing ability as well as his power I think that um, Robert Garcia is almost the perfect coach to utilise both Okay and Elliot in one minute or less what is your response to Paul's point about Robert Garcia being the coach for AJ I'm going to time you on this I'm afraid um, I think uh, I, I respect Robert Garcia and I respect Paul's point that he made eloquently there about um, Rodriguez and, and Ortiz having the high care percentages I almost feel like for me Garcia would be a good move in the sense I kind of like that my diner attitude of just getting getting him in there and just getting him dirty and just getting him just doing whatever he can essentially to try and disrupt UC. But I almost feel like they've not. I still don't think they've had enough time to implement a significant change in in AJ. Frankly, um, the sort that will be required. And I think it's a, don't get me wrong. Obviously, Rodriguez we've seen Ortiz fight against against especially Rodriguez recently fighting against you know a world level, elite level, championship level opponents. But I almost feel like the difference between. Joshua and Usyk is to the point where I almost don't think anyone could train him to, to beat Usyk. Frankly, uh, so it's not even a slight against against Garcia. I just don't. I just don't see. I think if they fight each other, Usyk and Joshua ten times, I think Usyk would win nine and a half of them. So it's like that's that's just how I see it. I just don't care who's training him, whether it's Box with Ben, whether it's Garcia, whether it's Fury himself. I just don't think any it makes any difference. Cool. Thank you very much. And with that, we've just got time for um, one more thing. Elliot, in 30 seconds, why does Usyk um, win this fight and how does he win it? I think he wins it in exactly the same way as last time, essentially, or if he wants it, a stoppage. I think he'll just, I think AJ will come in, try a bit more. Um, but I think, yeah, he'll just grind him down. I think it'll actually be sort of round nine. I think AJ's product of match room, essentially a product of hype. His ego is apparently, and his arrogance has essentially been found out. And I think you should have ducked Usyk on straight for Fury. Um, too much outside the ring, too many distractions. And I just think that when it comes down to it, Usyk will just draw him in, draw him in, and then stop him. And if only stopped him last time, I see him stopping him this time with AJ trying a bit harder. Bang on. All right, Paul. Same for you. Uh, you have 30 seconds for why Anthony Joshua wins this fight starting now. He loses the first few rounds. Um, everyone's starting to think, oh, we're seeing a repeat of the, set, the first fight. Then bang, he lands a 1 2 down the pipe. Usyk's, Usyk's legs wobble. They're like jelly. Joshua pounces on him like, like he brings out the beast like he used to. Um, he lands another flurry of shots on Usyk. Usyk goes down, gets back up. Joshua throws the kitchen sink at him because he knows he's hurt. He knows it's now or never. And, and and the referee jumps in and waves it off because Usyk can't continue anymore. And we have a three-time heavyweight champion called Mr. Anthony Joshua. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's, let's end the call then. All right, gents. Thank you very much. Looking forward to the fight um, a lot more now, but thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck, Paul. Good luck. Yes, good luck. (laughs) Enjoyed that.